in this video we are going to talk about the position of center of mass of hemisphere okay so this hemisphere we are going to talk about is hollow hemisphere not the solid hemisphere so if we have a hollow sphere right if we have a hollow sphere like this then it is obvious that the center of mass of that hollow sphere will be at the geometrical center of that sphere let's say this has a radius r then the center will be the center of mass of the hollow hemisphere hollow sphere not hemisphere so now what will happen if i have a hollow hemisphere so like this i have a sphere hemisphere like this then what is the position of the center of mass of this hollow hemisphere with this center this is not actually the center uh, if it was a whole sphere this would have been the center but now this is a hemisphere okay hollow hemisphere let's say the hollow hemisphere has a radius r now at what height from the bottom will be the position of center of mass that is the question now it is obvious by symmetry that it will lie on this line on this axis okay on this axis it will lie because uh, there is a equal half in the both sides okay so it will lie on uh, this axis okay but at what height it will lie okay at maybe half uh, is it at r by 2 it is at r by 6 r by 3 we don't know we have to find out that okay we know the center of mass formula suppose we have y c o m then we know integral y d m divided by integral dm will give us the center of mass position where y is the position of dm mass okay y is the position of dm mass so we have to integrate over y dm divided by the total mass right in this case we will take this uh, hemisphere as having the uniform mass per unit area that is sigma so sigma is equal to mass per unit area now the area of hemisphere is obviously 4 pi r square by 2 so this will be 2 pi r square because whole sphere has a 4 pi r square area so this is sigma is m by 2 pi r square now what we will do is this uh, let's assume that this hemisphere is made up of many rings okay many rings which are stacked over each other so this is the first ring okay on that there is another ring and then there is another ring another ring and so on like this okay so there are many rings stack over each other so now i will take this ring like this okay at a certain height certain height let's say y so this is a ring okay let's say the radius of this ring is small r the radius of the ring is small r right so now uh, this ring has certain mass let's say this is so small uh, in thickness that uh, it has a mass dm itself it has a mass dm itself and it thickness is very small okay it is so small that it sustains and a small angle like this which is d theta okay this sustains a small angle d theta at the center this is d theta now this is this whole length is r basically this whole length is r so if i see this um, uh, figure here i will show you like this it looks like this it is very small this is d theta angle so let me zoom in this one this picture let me zoom in the arc so it is like this this is d theta this is r okay then what is this length this length will be r d theta r d theta why because we know this angle d theta is equal to this length of the arc divided by r so from here i can say this is r d theta so this basically this length is r d theta which becomes the breadth of this ring okay this becomes the breadth of this ring now this ring has a length of 2 pi r 2 pi r small 2 pi r okay so now the da that is the small area of that ring is equal to 2 pi r that is the length into breadth which is r d theta okay so this is the 
area now what is r basically now if i say this angle is theta then this will become this length will become r cos theta this length will become r cos theta so this r cos theta is same as this r small r so let me write this small r as r cos theta so this becomes r cos theta so here there are two r so r square cos square cos theta d theta this is da right okay now we will write about mass now mass will be sigma is equal to dm by da this is the mass per unit area this is small mass dm this is very thin ring right this ring you can see here is very thin ring so that means it has the mass dm and area is da which is known to you okay basically you can see this ring has a 2 pi r length and a breadth is of r d theta like this now what is dm dm is equal to sigma times da so sigma into 2 pi r square cos theta d theta is equal to our dm right now what we will do we will find out the center of mass the so center of mass uh, is y dm okay now what is y basically y is you can see from here y is r sin theta the height at which this dm mass is so the height at which the dm mass is let me use different color here this is a dm mass basically this green one this green one is a dm mass so basically it is at height r sin theta because this length you can see from here this is r cos theta this is r sin theta so this height is r sin theta so now this is r sin theta into dm dm is sigma into 2 by r square cos theta d theta divided by integral over dm which is basically whole mass m capital m so let me take out uh, constants outside so this is 2 pi sigma r cube 2 pi sigma r cube integral sin theta cos theta d theta divided by m so let me put 2 inside itself okay let me not put it outside because i will tell you in uh, in one second why i am saying so so sigma is m by pi r square uh, 2 pi r square basically 2 pi r square so now 2 sin theta cos theta can be written as sin 2 theta d theta sin 2 theta d theta this m and m gets cancelled pi and pi gets cancelled we get r by 2 integral sin 2 theta d theta now the question is what are the limits of this theta the limits of this theta will be see from here you can see the theta starts from the origin here theta starts from this horizontal so it is starting from 0 then it will go all the up till 90 degree it won't go all over 180 degree because at each theta the le the left side also is covered right for this ring okay so this will go from 0 to 90 itself so it will be 0 to 90 so 0 to 90 okay so now this will become r by 2 sin 2 theta is uh, integral of sin 2 theta d theta is cos 2 theta divided by 2 this is 90 to 0 so r by 2 this will become uh, let me take this 2 outside so this is into 2 this is cos of 180 because 2 theta 2 into pi by 2 is pi minus cos of 0 minus okay because sin 2 theta d theta integral is minus cos 2 theta so this is minus and this is plus so now i will have r by 4 cos of 180 cos of 180 is minus 1 so this will become 1 cos of 0 is 1 so this becomes 2 r by 4 so this becomes r by 2 so the center of mass of the hollow sphere is at a distance r by 2 okay so at a distance r by 2 from this o origin let's say call this as origin at distance r by 2 the center of mass of this hollow sphere will be 